Today we are talking about Fat Shark Shark Bite and specifically the new video transmitter that was released a short while back. This is the TX5R.1 and this is a new single board 200 milliwatt video transmitter that is designed to be used with the Shark Bite system. Now what we're going to do today is take a closer look at the transmitter itself, walk you through some of its features and capabilities as well as the differences between it and some of the other boards and then at the end I'm going to give you my thoughts. Now just before we jump into it I just want to say if you do like what you see please do consider hitting the subscribe button and please don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support the channel there are links to buy me a coffee as well as Patreon in the description too. Anyway let's get on with this video and the first thing we're going to do is take a close a look at this new video transmitter. Okay so jumping over to the box as you can see it's called the TX5R.1. I wish they'd make their naming scheme a little bit easier because it took me about six attempts to get the start of the video done. However it is their new race style transmitter. So obviously looking along the back you'll find just all of the usual information and what is really nice is they have a nice quick QR code that will take you straight to the manual and help you get it set up. Opening the box, inside you'll find the new VTX itself. Now as I've mentioned, this is a new single board video transmitter. It's designed to have a 20 by 20 mounting pattern. It will support the HD 720p 60 frames a second and it can deliver up to 200 milliwatts. Included in the box with the transmitter itself, if you pull that out, you'll find a number of cables, some rubber grommets, as well as a little holder for holding the antenna connector on. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Jumping in and taking a closer look at the board, it is a rectangle design, which is a 27.2 by 45 mil size. It weighs just seven grams and it has that 20 by 20 M4 mounting pattern. Now, because it is narrower and longer, you do need to just watch it depending on what frame you're gonna put into. It does allow you to stack it on top or underneath your flight stack, depending on what your frame design is. But if you're gonna put it in the back, just make sure that there is enough space and you're not gonna catch any of the standoffs. Now, one of the nice improvements on this board compared to the other smaller board that Sharkbite make is that they've now put two holes next to the UFL antenna connector. That means you can actually put a cable tie or a small plate that they include over the top and that should help keep the connector in place as well as hopefully prevent ripping it off the board should you get into a crash. Now the original board did use the MMCX on this one because of the size they have moved over to that UFL so that is located on this side of the board and you then have your standard MIPI connector for the camera input located on the other side. Now one of my complaints on the original board that I've got here is that the only way to connect it was via these very small solder pads and I just felt that they were so close to some of the components they would be easy to damage. However they've improved that on this board and we've now got a proper connection for inputting our IO our power as well as our UARTs. However, if you did want to hardwire it, don't worry, you can flip the board over and you have standard solder pads located underneath with their labels next to them that allow you to connect it up nice and easily. You still on this board have the connector for the joystick and then we have our dedicated firmware port located on the other side over here. Now, whilst this board has been available for a few weeks, just a few days ago, there was a new firmware released for the Sharkbite system that brings a number of new features, including some new ones specifically for this board. Now, these new features include a new improved overall OSD, a new auto scan feature that allows you to turn it on and off or enter the last channel at power on. They've added VRX OSD recording status. They've added pit mode, which allows you to turn that power right down. They've changed the recording mode so you can have auto record or manual depending on what you want there is new smart audio support and that is one of the features that only works with this new board and that is going to allow you to have that two-way control you've got added movie recording format rf power manual calibration osd off option as well as numerous other bug fixes as well 
Now, the next thing I need to do with this new board is put it in a frame. Now, I'm going to be building this into a new dedicated 5-inch quad. The current Sharkbite system that I've got here is actually on loan to me, and it's been bouncing around a few frames just to allow me to get used to it. I've been trying it in wings and things like that. But for this one, I'm building a brand new dedicated quad that's going to allow me to fly the Sharkbite system a lot more often. Now, just to give you some thoughts on this new board, I like the size and shape you will though need to take into account that design with it being rectangular and you will need to be careful on things like standoffs it's really nice to see the improvements that they've made, like that covered UFL connection, that new connector that will make it just a bit easier to set up. You've got that more plug and play. I'm not averse to soldering because I do a huge amount of it, but I did think on the original unit, the pads were very, very small and they have improved that dramatically. Now, this board is a 200 milliwatt board, so it's not going to be ideal for everyone, but it is going to be perfect for everyday short range quad use. Yes, everyone is screaming out for a higher power board and i do know sharkbite do want to release one and they are working on it and hopefully we will see a new board in the near future that has something like that 800 to 1000 milliwatt for the guys who do that more long range flying and need that extra power now i'm currently flying this on a quite an older set of goggles because the ones i borrowed have gone back i don't really want to invest in a new set of goggles yet because i've been waiting for these new scout hd D goggles to release that have the shark bite system built in and that's what my plan is moving forward i'm going to get a set of them and use that with this system all of the time now there is a lot that really should be said on the development that this system has had over the last few months since my original review things have changed a lot. We now have canvas mode. We now have this new OSD. We've got the other features such as smart audio and the Sharkbite system is moving forward. Yes, it still doesn't have some of the things that the other one does, but they are making massive step forward all of the time. And it's really good to see where this system is going. I think this board fits a very nice segment and whilst it's not going to be ideal for everyone not everyone is flying long range fpv and not everyone needs more than 200 milliwatts output whilst it might be designed for more race applications there's still a lot of use cases that this is going to be ideal for now i'm looking forward to getting this into the quad and i'm hopefully going to get it flying in the next couple of days and i'm going to put out a second video once i do that just to give you guys an overview of what i think i'm not expecting anything dramatic on this one i know roughly what the system does and how it's going to behave there is a new camera coming in the not too distant future as well so i'm going to get that one and that the plan for that is again to go into that quad and that will be my more permanent shark bite system moving forward now as soon as there is more news on the new boards with higher power and these new goggles i will try to let you guys know and put some more updates out on this system as well i think i'm probably going to redo my review on this system at some point i'm going to start again and put a second review out when those new goggles land because i do think that's a step change in this system and how it's actually going to be perceived moving forward anyway that's pretty much it for today if you found this interesting please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support the channel for us to be able to keep making videos like this, so keep buying these VTXs, be able to buy things like these new goggles when they release, please do consider the links in the description. There's one for buying me a coffee as well as Patreon as well. Anyway, that's it for today. Please stay safe and I will speak to you guys again soon. Did it record? Yes.